All right, good morning, or good evening, where I am, in my mind, in my body clock. But uh, it's good to be back. I've, did, I've done a FDNF tour up in Masao as current ops officer, CTF-72. So I was very fruitful in helping me negotiate Narita last night. And, uh, but I, I am very excited about the topic that we have here and some of the things that we're, we're going to go through. Uh, just a little bit about community management. A lot of people know maybe who their detailer is, maybe know a little bit about placement. Who knows about community management? All right. And I know some of them have been community managers. I've run into some of them. But uh, we're, you know, if you heard about the detailer represents the sailor, the placement represents the command. I think loosely you could also see that community management, they represent the community or that TICOM who's in charge of that, uh, those sailors. So it's a little bit different lens that we look at. But we're also the big long-term planners for CMP. All right? And we plan in the eaches or in the different 90 plus ratings, 20 plus designators that we have uh, as we look at that. So that's a little bit different lens. And one of the things I like to look at is I like to fill that distributable inventory bucket that Admiral Meyer referred to so that he can put that out. And as you saw through the problems that we, we've been facing over the last several years with inconsistency, with budgets that's infected our session mission, and how, much, how many people we want in the Navy, those types of things really impact down the line, all right? I can tell you right now, anytime the FY13 cohort is at sea, you're going to have great sea duty manning. Anytime the FY13 cohort's at shore, you're going to have great shore duty manning, <laughs> all right? And it's the same thing with 16, it's going to be opposite. We originally started that with the 34-7 session mission, and we ended up with 30,700 because of the things that CMPs talked about. So every time FY16 is at, at sea, you're going to have what? All right, you see those problems. And, and one of the big issues is it takes about three years, two and a half years for a, a session mission to mature where it really is taking the brunt of what's out there at sea. By the time, you know, some ratings, it doesn't take very long. You have some ratings, at three months, and they're out there, right? And some ratings, it takes two years to get out there. So it takes about two and a half years to really fill that full support. And that's one of the problems with 13 and 16. You see, they don't match up very well. And so we're working hard on either side of that to make good decisions to do that. Uh, so one of the things that I do uh, is we, we execute the Seaway program, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through here and some of the things that we're talking about uh, and all those aspects uh, of uh, enlisted management. So next slide. All right, what is rating modernization? Why do we need to do this? All right, you get a lot of different talks. That's one of the questions I think is going to be on the poll. Uh, of why do we need to do that, and that's one of the big things I want to talk about. I'm not going to talk about all the different aspects of rating modernization, but CMP's already touched on a lot of those, and they're intertwined with Sailor 2025 as st rating modernization is. The big things that I want to talk about today are per the, ne the need to modernize our personnel system today, the importance of having flexibility in our distribution system, uh, the importance of enhancing our career flexibility. Uh, there will be other briefs to talk about advancement exams, and, and, we're, and we'll weave in some of the career cr credentialing and training opportunities as they tie in to the, the marketplace that we talk about. But the whole idea is really that bumper sticker down there below. It's really improving the readiness, sustainability, and adaptable and flexible uh, sailors, all right? So we need to have that to uh, make our force go. Next. So we had a case study. This is something CMP uh, had brought to me. He said, hey, you have HM, which is the largest rating in the Navy. All right, and you have about 40 different NECs, 29 different career tracks, all right? And they're, they're similar in skill sets, all right? They're similar in the in skill sets and the fact that they all come out of the HM rating, all right? But when you look at the next slide, 
this represents some of those different career tracks, you'll see a lot of different NECs that kind of march along. Now, there's challenges with that because some of these career tracks and these NECs end at E6. Some end at E7, some end at E8, some go all the way to E9, all right? But you have to have some flexibility to move people around within the Corman rating in order to accomplish out all the NECs. And it's a similar uh, idea that CMP is going with when it comes to there's certain ratings that have a, some overlap and similarity in their training and things that they do and skill sets that we can leverage also to develop better, more improved career tracks. So next slide. So how we might, how could we do this? So we have, you see these two different dichotomies, right? You see the sailor and you see the Navy. These are always going to be the dichotomies that we have. And in a perfect system, we want to have sailor choice to meet all the Navy demands. Now, who thinks that that's always going to happen? All right. It's the fact that that's going to be a challenge. So here, I want to talk a little bit about why we need to modernize, why we think a marketplace approach might help us. All right, today, when a sailor is going to stay in the Navy, they go into Seaway first, and we determine, hey, are you going to get a quota to re-enlist? You can look to be uh, at to convert to a different rating. You can go in and see if you want to do a component change to FTS or cell res. All right, so those are the three things. So when CMP talks about uh, Seaway going away, those things can't go away. We have to have control over how many people get quotas to re-enlist. And we have, to ha we have to be able to allow sailors to move to different ratings. And why would we want to have conversions? Conversions serve two purposes. In the Navy, on the Navy side, all right, I have ratings that are undermanned. And it might be because I didn't bring in enough. It might be because that rating's job changed as far as uh, we had a different system come online. We needed more of them. And so that there was growth or there was coming down. Like, so like MA rating, we had a lot of growth with MA rating as we saw security challenges that we needed to do. So we had to ramp that up. Uh, we've seen that with cyber, with CTNs. So we've had to grow those, all right? The, the best, you can do that from the session, but you also need to do it from conversions, all right? So from a Navy perspective, how do we balance out those ratings? That's our purpose. Uh, not all sailors get what rating they want, or they don't realize what rating, what it really means as they come in, right? And, uh, and so trying to balance that out is they want to make a change. That's why a sailor might want to go to a different rating. All right, so who's heard of this kind of industrial age process that we kind of have? And this is one of the things that the previous CMP talked about. Uh, this CMP has talked about before, and that's really one of the crux of the problems. We enter the Seaway, which is the first step. Then we go into CMS ID, which is the second step. All right, so we enter Seaway. Uh, pre previously, it was that you entered Seaway at 15, or, uh, 15 months, and then you went in at, at nine months. Now it's gone to 18 and 12. All right, so this is what could happen in this kind of serial industrial age approach that we had. We would have sailors come in, we could give them a seaway quota at 18 months. All right, we knew exactly how many we wanted in that rating. We have to control that. We have in strength goals that we have to reach within 2% plus or minus, or CMP is going to go have to talk to people on the hill, and then that doesn't make my life very well. So we have to meet those goals, so we have to control that. Uh, they, uh, so they would get a quota at 18 months. They go on a negotiation at 12 months, all right? And previously when we had some f problems with PCS orders, when were you getting PCS orders? Two months, four months, right? Two days, all right? So this is the problem that we, we created on ourselves because it's a, it's a good system. It's very fair but it's industrial and it's not very flexible and it's not very transparent in, in many cases. And that's some of the downsides of it. So at 18 months, I think I have a sailor for rating X that I'm gonna have in my rating that I need to maintain from a community management standpoint. 
At 12 months, Admiral Meyer is giving that sailor orders, and he thinks he's good to go. All right, the command thinks he's good to go, right? And you've all seen this. And, at, and then at the two-month part, when he gets the orders and he says, hey, you have to obler serve in the orders, what happens? Oh, I'm getting out, all right? I'm getting out. Because what would we tell people in commands because of the way we did Seaway? Hey, keep your options open, shipmate, right? If you can get a quota, get a quota. And why wouldn't we tell them that? We care about them. That makes sense, all right? But if they decided not to execute those orders, then what would happen? They leave, and what happens? You get a gap, all right? So we're going to use this marketplace approach to try to adjust that. But we're also, we also just released a message. You saw we talked about the NAV admin 00417, but we also just released a message on the PRDEAOS alignment. Why is that so important? Just because of what Admiral Meyer says. We want to align that signal. All right, so if, let's say you have an AD, all right, 48-month enlistment. What's his first tour link? 48 months. Can he serve 48 months if, he just, if we just allow them to go to their first tour? Can he finish his first tour link? No, because it takes at least six to nine months to get that sailor trained to get out to the first his first tour, all right? And this is a conversation I had with CMP when he was in, in 13, when he first came in, he was my boss. He's like, why do we do this in Seaway? Why are we making these decisions, all right? So you have natural retention and what I like to call Seaway retention, all right? And you heard CMP talk about how we have been a downward force. Well, when, when did we bring in Seaway? All right, in the 2000s here, in the last 10 years, it, it's, a, it's a predecessor, its predecessor was PTS. I think it's much improved from that. But it's really to control strength, all right? And so we're very good at controlling how many people we keep in. But natural attention might be better. And that's what uh, we want to look at more because there were sailors who I was telling, no, you can't have a quota, all right? And they were willing to stay in, where sailors who, that 18-month sailor I gave a quota to, he probably, it was, maybe if I get the exact orders I want, maybe something in my life changed, and now we've lost that person. But I've lost not only that person, but the person that I told Seaway to go away. Because if I had a rating of 200, and I needed to keep 150 in that rating, how many quotas would I give? 150. All right, and if I gave out 150 quotas and we see approximately 300 sailors a month leave with orders, all right, so I, I'm going to lose people and I wouldn't be able to keep them. So not only do we have to modernize our systems, the, all the IT that underpins, but our approach is one of those things that we want to change. Because we think just the approach of how we're going about doing it in this industrial age is causing some of the gaps, and it is. I think the alignment that we talked about, this PRD EOS, is so important. And that's going to take you all here, the command leadership, uh, and it's not as big a deal in the FDNF with the shorter tour links and things like that. But if you have sailors that have an EOS prior to their PRD, uh, it is so important to try to allow them to complete that tour. And that's really what we want to make those decisions at in between tours, not mid tour. We want to eliminate that. And that's exactly what that message did. Eliminated all that mid tour decisions. It's basically allowing the sailor to complete his tour. And that's what we want to do. So that's part of what we're doing. And but the marketplace is something that we think can allow us to balance out the needs of the Navy and needs of the sailor, all right? I, I'm in the process of getting ready to move, and so I have to sell my house, and sometimes there's a buyer's market and a seller's market, all right? The marketplace kind of regulates that. And we want to have that same type of approach where we can um, allow the marketplace to generate what we need uh, from the Navy. Uh, we pay SRB, SRBs for a skill set, right? All right, do we care about where that sailor goes and works afterwards? Nope, 
not connected to that. We say, hey, I need this many ITs to get this SRB so I can have them for retention for later on. All right, but, and then I give, so I give him a quota, give him an SRB, give him to Admiral Meyer, and he might not even put him in an IT job because he might need him to do recruiting, or he might need him to do push boots, right? So that makes some sense. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at with the marketplace is putting the bonus structure more on the billet, all right? When you put the, billet, the money on the billet, uh, you take care of not only the skill set, but also the location. We have all kinds of different bonuses. SDIP, AIP, I can't even keep track of them all. SRB, all trying to do different things, and sometimes they work contrary to each other. They don't even link up. By putting the money on the billet, all right, in some cases, if I have an FC Aegis sailor who wants to stay, I have no problems keeping FC Aegis sailors in Mayport. All right, but I have a little harder time keeping them in this important area out here in the FDNF, all right? If I put the money, the, the bonus structure, I might be able to pay them more out here and less in Mayport, all right? Let's, so let's reward them. Those are the kind of things that we're looking at. Uh, we also want people to make decisions earlier. So one of the things that we're looking at within this marketplace is making it a product of not only the when you come into the market, so the, the the sailor has a multiple, but the billet has a multiple. All right, so that way, it, we want sailor, because, hey, sailors are smart, right? They're going to figure this out. If we just put a concept of putting money on the billet, what are they going to do? I want to wait. The longer I wait, the more money they give me. All right? And so, but if we put a multiple on the sailor plus the billet, and that combination is the value you get. And as time goes on, as you look in the marketplace month to month, as you try to find, line yourself to a billet, then your multiple goes down, all right? And, but the, the billet value could be going up as well, all right? So we, we start to change that value by doing that. So that's one of the things that we're looking at as well. I think the biggest thing we're going to do with the marketplace, though, is that when, when you talk about it, the concept is, Get out of this serial approach and more to our parallel approach. So if you, the simplest way I could say it to you is, if you can align yourself to a billet, then guess what? You get a quota to re-enlist. You can't align yourself to a billet, you don't need a quota to re-enlist. You see how I start to eliminate that problem where I've given someone a quota and then they're not willing to do a billet later, and then they leave and now we're, we're out? Uh, we also need to do a better job, and we'll talk about this, of when you get a billet, let's make this more automated and you obviously serve right at the same time, all right? And so and it's all transactional, all right? Just like when you go buy something on the Internet, you know, you just, hey, you sure you want to use this ID card? You, you sure you want to use your credit card to pay for this? Yes. You sure you want to sign this? You know what this means? Yes. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So that's the simplest approach, is really to make this more at the same time. And that's really going to help us balance this need of the sailor and the Navy and what we're trying to do. But we need to do some other things as we do it. So next slide. You've heard, uh, last spring we came out with these communities and career fields. And, you, and, and I realize it's good to come out here and talk to you in context because some of the stuff comes out and you're like, what does this mean? Where are they going? Why are they doing this? All right, and we're trying to put this stuff together, and this is an opportunity for us to talk about it. So we talked about how we're changing our training, right? And we're going to break that up. And when we break it up into blocks, uh, we needed to be able to watch what those blocks did. We needed to be able to track that. And how do we track training typically? NEC, right? And so we need to give every rating an NEC so that we could track how the blocks of training were being accomplished. And so that's why we came up with this structure here uh, to do that. 
But we also wanted to kind of group them in natural communities that made sense so that we could start to get a sense of what, uh, where were their connections? Where were their things that were similar? I think we would all say you have a culture and training and aviation side, surface side, and the IWC, uh, submarine force, where you have some synergies just by being in that community, right? But there's also some natural things. If you looked at an AT in a squadron and an ET on a submarine, they're both getting what? Electronics training, right? Uh, an AD, an AE, GSM, GSE, both working on gas turbine engines in many cases, right? So, next slide, I'm gonna hit it again. We told CMP there's a lot of other connections, all right? And, and that we needed something to help us out with that. And what we, what we proposed to him was develop this commonality matrix, all right? So that we could try to determine where were the common, commonalities between different ratings, but not only rating to rating, like an AT to an ET, right? Or an AT to an AE, but also between NECs. All right, because there's certain NECs that might drive you closer in a, to a comparison. And that's one of the things that we're working with NAVMAC to help us develop out. And the, the ultimate idea is, is to be able to break down this training, all right? Because if we can break down the training into the different blocks, then I can give you the difference training. So today, if you are a GSE, and you wanted to go to be an AD, all right, or vice versa, what would I have to do? Well, the, the crazy thing is if you were a GSE and I wanted to make you an AD, I wouldn't even have to send you to AD, A school, because it doesn't require me to. But if, I, if you were an AD, I have to send you to GSE, A school. Does that make sense? And guess what? You have to go back and do the whole class, the whole course of instruction. Do you think you already learned much of that? You probably have. So we, if we block it up and take advantage of that and get that difference training, one, we can shorten around that, the timing of it, but also give them the right training that they need if you decide to make those types of changes. All right, next slide. So this is how it could work, where you have different ratings and different NECs. And this is important. We talked about fit and fill, right? And Admiral Meyer did a nice job describing Phil. And fit, he talked about, is it's at the pay grade and rating, right, level. And we like to talk about NEC. In some cases, that's important as well. Uh, but that's kind of that tertiary thing. I'm working with fleet forces uh, and others to try to determine a better way to do fit, all right? And the reason why is because of those things that we talked about and because there's different experiences. Uh, probably don't have, do I have any OSs here? All right, do I have OSs that work on the carrier? All right, I have OSs that work on DDGs, All right? Okay, is that different kind of OS work? It is, at least that's what OS has told me. You know, hey, I, I, I'm a carrier OS, I like to do that. I don't want it, it's different, you know? I, uh, and so those things matter. Right? That's why in, in aviation, type model series is so important. Who's heard of Amex in aviation? I know we're talking to a big surface crowd, but we do have some here uh, with, the, with the carrier here. Uh, that is to measure that experience. We're trying to look at those types of things to try to amplify what that means, all right? Where your experiences are. And so it, what we really see is your pay grade is loosely how we look at your experience, all right? And to me, I would say that's a poor proxy for experience. And why is that? Because everybody's experience is not the same, all right? What if you were one of these sailors that had to convert, all right? And now you, you're a second, you know, you're a second class journeyman, right? And now you're in a new rating. Do you really think you're a second class journeyman? Probably not. And so this is where CMP is going with this kind of career paths and lo really looking at the apprentice, journeyman, and supervisor. And it's not hard to figure out who's an apprentice. 
That's the first time someone's in a job or doing that kind of work in that rating. It's not hard to really figure out who's a supervisor. Culturally, I think we in the Navy think of a chief petty officer and above as supervisors from an enlisted standpoint, but really defining what that journeyman is and what that means. How many of your sailors come in and do their first tour? And this is one of the struggles that you have in FDNF and why the tour length is a problem, all right? Come in as an apprentice, but when they leave, they're really doing journeyman level work. Is that true? All right? And that's because well, a lot of these sailors are doing 48, 60 month tours. I mean, if you're still operating at the apprentice level at that time, I mean, there's a problem. So we have that kind of approach, and we have to be able to capture that better. And we think through this NEC construct, and this is why I'm talking about that, is using that NEC construct to really try to measure that better. All right, and it might be several NECs within a billet, but using that, uh, especially with the rating in NEC, to try to get that right amount of, so we can measure the experience that you have uh, in that and to try to capture that uh, and try to figure that out. Because what we want to do is when a sailor's looking at something and we're trying to find the perfect match, rating A, perfect match, the top one on the top, easy to get them to fill that billet. Uh, but down below, you have different levels, and we might be able to use that commonality matrix to determine Hey, what is that difference training really need? Give them that different training, get them there to that billet, and so they can use it. All right, next slide. All right, so how are we going to do this? Uh, this is kind of a pictorial of everything's going to go through the marketplace. Uh, w when you go into the marketplace, everything's going to go through My Navy Portal, all right, and the different functions that we have. And there's already been some good questions. I have seen a lot of improvement with the low bandwidth option. And I would say to uh, Master Chief, what's one of the problems? When you f something first comes out, you look at it, right? Well, this thing can't even log in, it's beta, messed up, all right? Never look at it again until you have to, all right? And I would tell you one thing with the My Navy portal, it is constantly improving. When you say that, Fleet, I mean, it is something that's going to be constantly improving. So if you don't like it, comment on it. Uh, but it's going to get better, and it's going to be iterations. I would say now that that portion of it is much better, but because it has so many links, it doesn't fix all the problems that Master Chief alluded to. That's for sure. All right, so the idea is you're going to go into this marketplace. You're going to enter via the My Navy portal, all right? We still have to accomplish the same things that we want to do with CUA and CMS ID, all right? So we're still, CMS ID is about aligning a person, manning side of it, right? Aligning, aligning a person to a billet. Seaway is more of manpower type decisions, getting people in the right ratings and whether you should get a quota or not, combining that. So we're still going to be doing those things. And the idea is that we're going to have, a sailor is going to have a resume, all right? And the resume is all the things that we have right now in our corporate data systems. They're just so spread out and disparate, it's hard to get them, all right? But put it all together where a sailor can see all the different things that they've earned, all the training they've done. Uh, we'll talk about Navy Cool, all the credentialing, all that stuff that they have that makes that sailor who they are and what they are. And then, and one thing we got to keep in mind is how, how often you go into a, a billet or a job and you've been perfectly qualified to take over that job, all right? So, so often you go to those things and we give you training and route. All right, so a lot of times we'll have an NEC or something on the billet, and the, the pool of people we're looking to put in, they're not there yet. They don't, there's not this perfect lateral position because we are an up, upward-moving and growing opportunity-based uh, system. So you're going to get some of that training in, in route, so that's important to keep in mind. But what that resume is going to show is your potential and what you have done. All right, and then we want to look at that with the relate, relation to the billets. So today, if um, you're an OS, what billets can you look at? OS billets. That's it. All right. Uh, and that's the reason why is because if you wanted to convert to a different rating, you would go in the Seaway, all right, and then you would um, 
and if you wanted to change to a different rating, you would ask for it, we'd give you approval on Seaway, then you would get that approval, and then you would go talk to the detailer. All right? Well, we want to do all that at the same time, so we have to allow you the opportunity to look at different billings that you might qualify for. And that's where this commonality matrix is important because the, the more value that your commonality, your score that you have on your resume will help you determine of what other ratings you might qualify for, all right? And, and where you might uh, be better aligned to do, and we can tell you that. So we're going to bring that in. You're going to enter my Navy portal, and you're going to be able to explore. So you can explore what range you're going to qualify for, all right? You'll be able to explore the join application to see what, what things that you might like to do. But uh, if you go to the next slide, we have an example, example of HT2 Joe Saylor. And uh, he's an HT. He's in Norfolk right now. All right, his goals are, he, he likes the Navy, he wants to stay in the Navy, but he liked to stay in Norfolk, all right, and he would, and, um, but he's, he's seeing that his, his rating, this is uh, maybe not true today, but it's a little stagnant, all right, so a lot of this is notional up here. So his advancement process is not that great. So he looks up, and he's able to, to look at all the different billets that he could qualify for. And the idea would be able to say, hey, you could see everything that were in HT. You could see you have to, a scale that you could basically, hey, show me what billets that I'm 80% common with. So it might not be a perfect match because it might be a, in a different rating, but I don't have to do that much training. All right? Or you could open that up, widen that aperture. You could look by just what location. You could do those types of things. That's the kind of idea. And then you'd be able to compare across. The idea is kind of like if you're going to buy a car, right? If you're going to buy a car, you got all these different great websites, right? You can compare all these cars side by side. You can look at them, see all the options, see which is best. And that's the idea to be able to do this with your billets, to look at which ones, the locations, the train that's going to be required, uh, the obliserve that's going to be required, what kind of advancement process. You'll see there's different advancement rates uh, even though there might be an HT bill because some of them are where they're at, all right? You're working in rate. There's some places where you're working outside of rate, and maybe you don't have the same kind of advancement opportunity historically. Um, incentive pay, so many of those different things. How many people really understood how much extra money they would have when they got orders to Japan? All right? I mean, you don't, some, sometimes you do, you understand COLA, I think you best appreciate that when you leave. <laughs> Trust me. I did, I did Japan, then I did Hawaii, and then I went to Tennessee uh, in successive years and, I, and s tours. I went, what happened to all the money I made when I was a lieutenant commander that now I'm a commander and I'm not making as much? All right? So those types of things are important to be able to capture. What SRBs you can get, what bonuses you can get, what kind of COLA you might have, uh, all are important to make a decision. So this particular sailor, every sailor has a different set of ideas and different things that they want. The Navy has different ideas and things that, the, that, that we need to get. So in this particular case, as he looked through this list, and you can see some of the representation, some of the ideas that we try to put in here. We have an HT1 billet. We're trying to represent that idea of being able to maybe take a billet and then get advanced, all right? It's how we're going to do that, what we're going to do, those are things that we're working out in pilots, but that's the kind of the example there. You see different ratings, MR2, DC2. So in this particular instance, for uh, HT2 Sailor, his priority is staying in Norfolk and really trying to look at increasing his advancement opportunity because he sees his current rating is kind of stagnant. All right, so he, he decided, hey, I'm going to go. My first choice was going to be the first one there, uh, going to be a DC-2, all right, in Norfolk. All right, and then he had an HT-2 billet that was in the Norfolk area. It was shore, and then, and then he looked at the HT-1 that was. But the, his first priority was to be, do the DC-2 job. Don't ask me why, but that's. That's the, why he decided what he decided. 
And next slide. So we put in for it. Boom. You're approved. All right. And that's one of the problems that we have in our current system today, all right, is uh, the time it takes to, one, find out uh, are you selected, take some time, all right, and then the order satisfaction of waiting to get those orders, right? And that's one of the things we want to try to improve is by making this all automatic, all that information, all right, that would be in the orders, uh, what you're going to have to officer for, what kind of training you're going to need to do, where that was going to be. All that's going to be laid out there in this kind of page. To basically, it's basically the orders written out saying, hey, are you good with this? This is what you selected. This is what you approved for. Are you good for it? If it is, hit the button because we're going to send you the links to Obliserve and do the things that you need to do to start that process electronically. All right. Not going down, have to go down to PSD, wait for all that paperwork. Now, are there things that we have to work through? Anytime you have things like this with SRB, that's a problem, right? Well, if we change it where you're getting going to get paid a different value by when you get to the bill, that kind of fixes that, right? Now, there's going to be certain, do I have any nukes in here, nuke ratings? All right, do you think they're ever going to take your SRB away? No. Trust me. That's why we invented SRB. All right? <laughs> so, uh, but uh, what we need to do is work through this so that we don't disadvantage a sailor. All right? Why do sailors wait to obviserve? serve? All right? They're, they always do it to try to get the most amount of money. All right? And so they'll wait around and try to do things, and then we get disconnected. Well, if we know that's what the sailor wants to do, why don't we just allow the system to be able to do that? So when they obviously serve, hey, we're going to give you the most amount of money that you can get out of this. All right? And if it changes, it changes and things like that. So those are things that we have to work through. So next slide. This is the final slide. We want to refine, redefine some of our communities and career fields, which we've done. Uh, with these career tracks, but the commonality matrix is an important nuance to be able to tell that difference. I think you can see what that difference training is. You need to have that block training and ready relevant learning training in line to help us take advantage of it. All right, we're going to use those NECs to help us better define what uh, the proper fit is and, and how we can track this a little better and, and that experience capture that. Who thinks it's a good idea if you're an E7 or an even an E6 to be changing to a different uh, rating? Anybody? No. Is it very helpful? It's not good for the Navy. It's definitely not advantageous for the sailor. And, and most sailors, they, they, they like their rating at that time. And I, I would say most sailors like their rating. All right. Uh, and so in those cases, what we want to try to do is make this early on. You know, that first tour, after that first tour, uh, is when we want to try to make that decision to get you aligned to the rating that you need to be in. We don't, the only reason why we want to do it later on is if we had some really, uh, either you could not stay in that rating because of some uh, maybe medical qualifications or something like that that, hey, but you, you still could serve in the Navy, so we'd put you in a different rating that's similar. That helps us with this construct. Um, but it's important for us to be able to align you early. And I think that's good for both people, both sides of the equation. We want to improve the detailing process. I think the biggest thing is this transparency, all right? Advertising all the billets. Just because you advertise all the billets doesn't mean you're going to fill them all, all right? I was an aviation officer detailer, 05 and 06. I advertised every single bill that we had. All right? I'd have people, hey, I want that. I'm like, look, when was the last time that bill was filled? That, that bill's been gapped for four years. You think you can get that? No. You're not going there. <laughs> All right? We can have those adult conversations. People don't mind being told when they can see it, hey, no, that's not a priority. I'm not going to send you there. I need to send you here. That's easy. It's when you hide things, I think, when people go, well, you're hiding.